So my second example here is one of these dynamic pages that integrates ex external XML content, CSS, and AJAX capabilities to build interactive content. But when I look at it in Design View, it doesn't really look like that final experience. So what we've done is we've integrated a WebKit uh, browser rendering engine directly into the application. So just with a click of the Live View button, I can then interact with it just like it was with just like as if it was within a web browser. But also, we've taken it a little bit further. So I can take this content and also access Code Navigator within that to see all the styles that are in use. And if I want to see what's happening under the hood, with a click of this Live Code button, I can see everything that's happening that ordinarily would have been invisible to me. And I would have had to have done, uh, I can only now do in CS4. Again, we're short on time. Uh, there's a lot of other things I know that are also uh, highlighted that you could spend time with if we get to the website. A few more things. Ajax. We have really strong Ajax support, both for designers that want to integrate web widgets into their designs, and also for programmers that want code completion for very popular Ajax frameworks like Prototype. We also have a new capability for, de uh, for developers that are not quite up to date with XML. They're not, well, not ready for it. We've built capabilities for HTML tables to be used as sources of data for dynamic pages. Excellent. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Johnny. So again, in this space, in the interactive and web design space, we're really trying to improve the uh, workflow between designer and developer. That, that is crunching down very tightly now, as you saw from, from Otapod and some of the things Doug showed you. We're trying to make that workflow be much simpler, much more streamlined. Uh, we're trying to give you con better control of your assets. We're trying to make it more flexible with things like Air to give you more flexibility to do new things and, and, and pioneer new territories with application development. And then lastly, of course, um, we're pushing with Flash and that Flash, that Flash platform. Just as a sidebar, uh, the Air application count is now over 25 million Air applications are now installed. So again, we're trying to ride the wave of Flash with Air as well for distribution. And again, you'll take advantage of that. Lots more information available online. Please check it out. So the last segment we want to talk about is really around design and cross-media. And of course, this is Adobe's sweet spot. This is where our roots came from. Um, in this area, we want to talk about the people that are going from print to web, which is every print shop I find is tra transitioning from print to web, or web to interactive. And they're trying to cut the time it takes to build or migrate uh, the tools that they're building right now. There's a lot of people who are in the traditional print space who struggle with moving to interactive because of the challenges with that. So we have some key things we're doing. So again, what we wanted to do here was go outside and find someone who could actually represent this. So up in Portland, Oregon, today we have with us the Curiosity Group. So the Curiosity Group is based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they're owned by Steve Klein Tobe, who's, uh, as I understand it, is a creative genius. Uh, they uh, do editorial content, print content, interactive, uh, motion graphics. They have a laundry list of customers or clients that include HP, uh, Disney, uh, Microsoft, and DreamWorks. So with that, I'd like to introduce a couple people uh, from that team. I'm going to br bring out uh, Tim May and Yvonne Perez. Uh, he, uh, Tim is the senior designer and art director, uh, winner of the Cut and Paste Award up in Oregon recently. And Yvonne is actually the lead senior art director. Uh, she has notable work in the print space, but she's also moving to the interactive space. So let's see what they've done. Yvonne? Hey, Yvonne. Hey, Tim. Okay, so like everyone else, you only guys had a, a week or two to actually play with some of the stuff. You let your guys in your shop take a look at it. Yeah, What'd you it's, think? It's, it's been awesome. Um, we've been playing with it, and the, the upgrades to it, the CS4, is, is amazing. We really love it. Excellent. Yeah. The bad news is we're probably going to have to buy it for everybody on the staff now. So Always hate hearing that. <laughs> so what, what are we looking at? Well, um, what we've got right here is Picklebird. Picklebird is a campaign that we did for Hewlett Packard. It's something that involves a printable book and a party kit. Picklebird. Picklebird. Let me introduce Picklebird here. Hi, Picklebird. Um, one of the characters for the campaign. Um, one of the things that CS4 allows this campaign to do is better reflect Curiosity Group's mission, which is to give everyday people creative experiences and thereby strengthen their ties to the brand. So I want to show you and jump right in. I'm in Illustrator right now. And for those of you familiar with Illustrator, it looks a little different. I have multiple artboards. Um, this is going to be a huge improvement, particularly for us. Uh, I can create a new artboard on the fly. Um, I can export these to any type of media. Here's a new workspace or you know, new, new artboard there. Great. And uh, I can go tabbing back.
between applications. The tabs is actually a big time saver as well, uh, or between the, uh, the, the windows I've got there. It sort of cleans up the workspace. I'm kind of infamous for having about 17 windows open at the same time. Creative directors come over and look at me and give me the stink eye. Um, so, so what I can do now <clears throat> with these multiple artboards is I can drag elements off real quick, say I want this over here. Um, you know, it's just a, a, a better uh, way to work. And one of the tools that I think is really cool, I mean, there's a lot that I enjoy, but one that I think is uh, particularly applicable to the type of work that I like to do is the blob brush. Now, it's not a very elegant name. Hey, 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 blob <laughs> brush, come on, I like it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but it does really great things, particularly for quickly drawing or designing work. So I can start sort of scribbling here with the blob brush. Say I want to make a little wormy friend for Picklebird, and I can, uh, I can, I can create a character. So cool, it looks like the other brushes. But the thing that's great about this, I'll zoom in, is that now I've got a path, and I can smooth that path out. You know, I can do a lot of other things with it that will allow me to um, sort of, you know, I can erase it if I want to. I don't like that edge of it. Um, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a great way to have a filled path. Before, I would have had to use the pen tool and click, pull, click, pull. It would have taken forever to do anything worthwhile. But now, all of a sudden, I can sort of create this little character. And uh, I'll see if I can give him a couple of elements that will make him a little more interesting. Let's give him a, a pair of eyes and a mouth. There you go, a little wormy, blobby guy. And as an illustrator, you know, it really is nice to just be able to sort of rapidly prototype things, put things together. I come from a painting background, and so what, another thing this does is sort of gives me a more painterly approach to creating shapes in Illustrator. You know, I, I really enjoy um, just being able to sort of put things down, and it's a time saver. Excellent. Yeah. So now we've talked a little bit about what's happened on the digital side with illustration. Maybe we talk about now we've got the print side and what comes in and you're actually moving from the print space. Obviously, we've shown multiple pages here, mm -hmm. but if you actually wanted to do a booklet where you had multiple pages, you're not going to use Illustrator. You're going to use InDesign. Exactly. I'm going to use the layout program that I'm familiar with the most, um, although Illustrator has some beautiful, wonderful new features. Uh, it's not logical that I would create a 16-page book in it, so yes. Um, so I'm going to place the artwork that Tim just did in my InDesign document, and it's basically the same way. You might be wondering, well, how, how can you place uh, one element from multiple artboards? It's pretty cool. It opens up this preview, and you can click through here and see the multiple artboards that we have in, and I can place a document either way. I want to place it with crop, trims, bleeds. I'm going to go for just the art, place that last page, and just draw and click. There he is. Um, another really great feature about InDesign is it has this live pre-flight here. So it's, right now, it's already telling me that I have an error. So every time you do create an error, it automatically shows up. So this is telling me there's something wrong with my text. I have an overset text and what page I'm going to. Page 13. Boom. This so, is really cool. So this is basically pre-flight allows you to actually set parameters up. Mm -hmm. And then if you have, whether it's font or color or shape or whatever, you can actually set up a set of parameters. And anything that goes outside of those parameters alerts you then to avoid problems down the road. Right. Yeah, no more surprises at press check, which is really, Excellent. really nice. Um, one of the great new features that um, I love about this, this is as far as I've been able to go with my skill set. I mean, I know Photoshop, Illustrator, and that. But if I need to take this to an interactive space, I have to use a different resource for that. And... Um, Adobe has created a new way for me to s export this whole document, all 16 pages, into a Flash document. But wait, so you've been, uh, you have a print background, yes. uh, yeah. extensive work there, but now you're actually moving to Flash. So are there things that we have done in CS4 that have actually made it easier? Because one of the, the challenges with Flash has been that first step is a big step. Oh, yeah, it's been really daunting for me to even try to get in there. And you guys have created a, just a simple export, and I'll tell you right here, it's called an XFL. I like to call well, it the well, this extreme particular shot, flash the file. Made up of so I'm going to save this. There's high dynamic and I'm going to be able to open there. that file. There's a lot of effects and stuff going on. Something like this for a two second clip could flash, take 10, 15, 15 minutes. And um, uh, but yeah, when well, I, you, know, you just there. hop right back and forth <laughs> a little and check bit. it. Uh, but I'm still not familiar with Flash right now. So what else did you find that would be Adobe's created these great features here where I can change the workspace. I'm going to change it to designer. And this feels a little bit more comfortable for me. So here's my tool palettes. My pages are down here. And um, at this stage, I can go in by myself without uh, anybody working in Flash and make cha uh, late stage editing. So I don't think you're 29 years old. Well, let's see. There you go. It smells oh, like it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I can use this later. <laughs> Chinatown.